Welcome to the Diary of Discovery, the podcast where we delve deep into the human experience of healing and transformation. I'm your host, Jackie Clark, and each week we will sit down with inspiring individuals who have embarked on their own personal journeys of healing and self-discovery. From overcoming trauma to navigating life's challenges, our guests share their raw and honest stories, offering insights, wisdom, and hope to all who tune in. So grab your favorite cup of tea, find a cozy spot and join us as we uncover the power of resilience, courage, and the pursuit of authenticity. This is the Diary of Discovery. Welcome to the podcast, Jillian. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, Okay, so before we dive in, just tell everyone who you are and where you are in the world. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. So um, my name is Jillian and I am based in Northern Ireland. So I'm so excited to be here just to share a little bit about my story. Amazing. Thank you. Um, so, okay, you know that we're here to talk about healing today. Yes. And that's what we that's what we do. So um, my first question is always like, when did your healing journey start? So like, what was the moment that you realized that you had to do something different and you had to heal? Yeah. um, Well, I suppose like I lost my sister back in 2012. So it was actually a few years after that. So um, I had just pretty much got to the bottom of myself where I couldn't actually see a way out. I couldn't see like a way forward. There was no um there was no way I was able to do life or anything like that so um I had like two choices so um one was good one was bad so um it had just got to the stage where I thought you know what something needs to change and um I was part of a church at the time and who did counselling stuff so I actually went to Sunday and I just said like you know what I need help because something within me I actually knew that it was I was I was ready to do it. It was time where before I wasn't actually ready to do it. I knew that something needed to change. But something just that day clicked and I thought, no, I need to, I need to try something different here. So I think that was pretty much when it all started. <laughs> it's amazing because, you know, I'm talking to so many people about their healing journeys now. Mm. And yeah. So many people have said that same thing to me around, you know, it wasn't in the moment, it was an immediate moment, but it took a while to kind of get to that point. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, When you look back on it, it it seems like an instant moment, but it's not actually actually a process and that's okay. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So what, like in that time before you sort of decided to heal, and before you kind of started the journey, what what were you kind of like dealing with? How were you feeling? What was the sort of like, I call it the darkness that you had to embrace to kind of go on this journey? Oh, but my like, goodness. What was that feeling? <laughs> it was like really dark. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So like it was all like if you were looking at me on the outside, you would think, oh, she's doing all right. Everything's great. But it was really like internal. So it was just like I, I felt like I was sitting under like a heavy rock, just being physically crushed. And it was like your very breath was actually being squeezed out of you. And you just literally couldn't breathe. And that's what I was mm-hmm. living with day by day like it was like every day the breath was getting less and less and I I was like oh my goodness seriously like, I can't do this anymore I need to breathe so that's what it was like it was just intense all the time this this constant mm. squeezing <laughs> oh yeah that must have been really really tough going through yeah. that yeah definitely like it's it, when you're going through it you sort of think oh there's no end to it at all but it's it's not until actually you take you decide to take control and change things that uh, that's when you come out the other side. Then you can look at it and think, oh, <laughs> I've made it three. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's really interesting because for a lot of people, obviously, the moment you decide to start healing, the moment you decide to start doing the work, like that's not the moment that everything gets better, is it? Mm, no, I wish it was. <laughs> I absolutely wish it was. <laughs> that's just one, 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 one decision. Like, it's still going to take some time after. 
but making that decision, like to start your healing journey, that is like the best decision you can make. It's not all going to be fixed then and there. Like, I wish, you know, there was like a wee magical one where you could just go, da da, there's all fixed. <laughs> but no, <laughs> unfortunately not. No, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it would be wonderful. If that yeah, it would be case. great. Healing is a journey. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So when you were going through, once you'd made the decision, you started the healing journey, you started to talk to people, you were kind of going through that process. Were there any moments after you made the decision where you still felt like, oh, I might not make this, like I might not be able to do this? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time I started going I started going to the counselling so I did so I mean I was in counselling for about two years and like just there were some weeks was good but then there was other weeks when we were just like hitting like really really tough stuff really hitting to the core of like my emotions and what I was actually feeling and just things I didn't actually want to face and I was like no do you know what I can't do this I can't do this and I I was just so close to like um just walking away because I thought no this is this is too raw this is too hard for me to actually deal with and I thought Mm. there's no way I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this right the other side but like with my she kept saying to me no push through push through because this is this is key because when you get to the core of what you're actually feeling, then you will see your breakthrough. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I can make it. I don't think I can do it. <laughs> yeah, know? it is quite uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. And you sort of think, oh my goodness, is is it actually worth it? You know, is is worth is is worth is the pain I'm going through right now actually worth what's on the other side? But it is. Mm. You just don't see that at the time. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. So you did counselling, obviously you said for two years, which is absolutely incredible. I'm a massive advocate for Mm. counselling therapy, like going and doing the work. But what else did you do like around counselling? How else did you support yourself in that healing journey? Oh, I'm a a big fan of like journaling. So Mm -hmm. um, that was quite key for me to do that because there were times where I couldn't explain to anybody else or myself what was actually going on inside because I didn't have the words I didn't have the vocabulary so just having that bit of paper in front of me was my like safe space where I could just like put down words or it it didn't even sound coherent if you like if you read it back you'd be like that doesn't even make sense but it didn't matter um it just Mm. was like a bit of paper where you know if I was feeling particularly angry one day where I just might have scribbled all over the page and you know like it it was fine because nobody was going to judge you on what you'd put down in the paper where if I was going to talk to somebody I would have to make it all nice and sweet and fancy where like for I was when I was actually journaling. It was actually my time where I could just be real with me and just let it all out. <laughs> mm. Yeah, absolutely. No, I completely, completely get that. And so many people that I talk to um, have mentioned journaling as mm. a like yeah. a way of it's a real life coping. Yeah, mm. it's a real life life. Was there anything else that kind of supported you as you went through that transition? Um, well, I suppose like my, my faith did as well. Like I it was part of a church, so there was um a, a couple of uh, ladies there who were actually very supportive and just encouraged me to keep keep going and um keep coming to church even though I didn't really want nothing to do with it. But um yeah, so I mean it was having that like small community around who they didn't mm-hmm. understand but they just they just gave me space just to be myself if I needed to cry, if I needed to talk. You know, they were there to, to do that. So, I mean, having that supportive community around you is also very helpful. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, whatever that looks like, a friend group, a family yeah. group, a church group, like yeah. it doesn't matter what it, it is. It but... doesn't matter at all. But, yeah, it's very important that you have, like, you don't need an awful lot of people, like just one or two people even, that just understand who you are. And even if they don't understand what you're going through, but just having that one or two people around you that can just give you the space that you need just to be you is really, mm. really important. 
Yeah, absolutely. So it's really interesting because obviously I know you really well. We've known yes. each other for a number of years. Now. Yes. Um, yes. And I know with the work that you do and, you know, everything um, that you sort of help women through now in your capacity as a coach. Yes. You had a massive like questioning of your faith yes. as you kind of went through this and lost your sister and had to sort of come out the yes. other side. How was that for you? Like being such a Christian and and going through that questioning, like how was that? Um, it was really difficult because I mean I was like I I've been brought up in the church, I've been brought up in um in that society and like so obviously whenever like my sister died, I just questioned everything, like everything I believed in, everything that I was taught growing up. Um I didn't even know if I wanted to be a Christian anymore because like I just you know what I was experiencing and what I had been taught growing up just didn't match and I thought well do you know what like how can I how can I believe in something or somebody that you know allows somebody that I love to die <laughs> you know so it is, it's really it was really difficult where I just like everything that I believed in just completely fell apart so I had to start to rebuild mm-hmm my beliefs back up again and mm. it's actually okay to question you know it's absolutely okay to question you know you yeah. not to take everything at face value so I had to relearn everything and like when I and when I was walking through that like that's where my support came in because I didn't want anything to do with church I thought no I can't do this anymore this this isn't for me but they kept encouraging me to come and along anyway knowing that I was ready to walk away but they seen potential in me and didn't want me to actually give up on something that they knew I knew deep down was going to help me through (laughs) Mm. yeah it's amazing would you say that your faith has gotten stronger by going through that yes absolutely absolutely I mean there's plenty of people I know and I've heard of that I've walked away from the face and that's absolutely fine I mean whatever you decide to do it's up to you you know but for me that was that was key for me and it's actually helped my my faith actually to grow stronger uh, and grow deeper and yeah it's probably been a better way than it has been for quite some time if I hadn't gone through that yeah it's incredible isn't it so I guess kind of leading on from that, what do you think your sort of biggest change or like shift was in regards to like your outlook on life from going through that healing process? Um, probably just how I seen myself and how I seen um, other people and how, you know, it just sort of gave me more, like, I mean, I always would have been compassionate towards other people, but it, like it, gain depth there was a like a depth that came with it that um yeah it just made me it just made me change my whole outlook and life really and mm. uh, just helped me just like grow as a person I mean I, I wouldn't say I'm the same person now that I was like 10 years ago like it's just completely completely changed changed everything yeah and I think like again like when you go through a healing process, it does fundamentally change you. Mm-hmm. It does. Like, it would be weird if it didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you're not, I'm very really scared to sort of say, like, it's like you're not doing something wrong if it doesn't change, are you? But it's, it's allowing you to change it uh, for the better. Some people, when they're going through healing, it changes them for the worse, but it's allowing, it's allowing you to use your healing journey to change you for the better because it will. If you like yeah. it. Yeah. And that's what, that's what it did for me. Yeah, 100%. And actually, off the back of what you've gone through and the, the kind of um, journey that you've walked, you know, being in the church, losing your sister, mm. going through this process, would you say that it sort of helped you find your purpose a little bit and like, start I mean I know obviously you've started a business so like your work is now aligned to this but like do you think that you ended up in this position because of everything you've gone through 
Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, I suppose in a way, like, I probably always knew deep down that I was going to help people uh, in some capacity, but I just, I didn't really know how. But then, obviously, because of my life's experiences, it's given me more clarity and my purpose. So now I know 100% that everything that I've been through, I can now use because I've done the healing work. And it's not mm. triggering me um, as much if it's all now. So now what I've been through now, it has definitely given me more of a sense of purpose that that's what, how I come along then uh, alongside other, you know, Christian women who might be navigating the same sort of things as me. And because I've been there and I've done the work, then I can support them through that too as well. Absolutely. It's definitely 100% clarified what mm. I know I'm meant to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so... Um incredible about a healing journey as well if you let it it can really kind of open your eyes to oh, what you're supposed to be doing definitely yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so what advice would you give our listeners if they are just starting this journey so they're in that kind of mm. messy realization that yes. something needs to change. And it what is messy. You to give them? <laughs> it is so messy. messy. Yes, it's absolutely messy. But my advice would be keep going. Don't let it mm. overwhelm you because it will overwhelm you at times, but don't let that overwhelm take you off course of your healing journey keep going keep pressing in you know it will be messy it's absolutely chaotic but that's okay um you'll wish you never started but if you keep going to the other side then when you look back then you'll see uh it was worth it it was worth pushing through it was worth going through all that mess but absolutely if you're just starting your healing journey please keep going it's absolutely worth it you'll not see it right now but it is absolutely worth it (laughs) <laughs> yeah no absolutely and what do you think the kind of first step is that people can take to start healing like what would you say the first thing is um the first thing probably actually well for me like so uh it would be actually knowing that you need help um mm. and actually recognizing that like um you can go through your whole life knowing on some level that you need you need help, you need to heal, but it has to actually, like, there's something inside, it's like a light switch inside needs to be flicked on and then, you know, there comes a point where it's like actually, do you know what, right, okay, now I'm ready actually to take that, to take that step, so that would be your first step and then just actually then looking round or even writing down well, what do I need help with? Mm. You know, and what, what am I ready to tackle now? Because you can't tackle all at once. So mm-hmm. that would be my, my next step. Write down the areas where you need help and prioritise them. Mm-hmm. And then go find somebody then that is going to be able to help you with each one. One yeah. at a time. I think it's so, yeah, I think that's such a good piece of advice that, mm-hmm. that actually like breaking out the healing journey into areas rather than just yeah. lumping it all together and making it huge. Yeah, you can't do it. It needs to be broken down into tiny small steps because when you look mm-hmm. at it, when you look at it as a big thing, it's absolutely going to overwhelm you and you won't do it. You won't do it. But when you break it down into tiny manageable steps, then you'll be able to think, actually, do you know what? I can do this. And then you can tick them off then one, one step at a time and you can, you'll be able to see your progress. And celebrate it as you as you just make your way through. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And in that process, so like you said, you know, just start writing down mm-hmm. what you need help with. Like, do you have any advice as to what people can focus on when they sort of grab that piece of paper and get started? Um. Yeah. Well, I suppose like my advice would be, you know, like look at what you what you believe what are you struggling with what are the questions you're struggling with um right now like what are your strengths what are your weaknesses where do you feel like you need to change like what is it that is absolutely like gripping you right now that you just can't like what's that hurdle that you can't seem to get over 
they keep tripping over mm-hmm. time, time and time again. Like, what is that? Like, I would mm-hmm. start there, you know, just try to describe that and break mm-hmm. it, break it down. Oh, I love that question. What is the hurdle that you just can't get over? That's yes. such a good question. Yes. Because that's what it boils down to, because everybody's got a hurdle and there's something that, you know, that you keep facing that's keep tripping you up all the time. So that's where you need to start. What is it that is tripping you up all the time that you can't seem to get over? That's where you need to start. Mm. Mm, Absolutely. Oh, I like that. I like Mm. that. Now, I know, um, again, from working with you and seeing what you're doing online, That if anybody wants to come over and follow you on social media, you're really big on Instagram yeah. and sharing loads of tips and tools and um, yeah. things about faith and about journaling and about yeah. you know how people can start this journey. So yes, yes, yes. So um, yes. Yeah, so I mean, I'm on Instagram. So if anybody wants to um, plug in, um, you're more than welcome to come over and uh, see see what it's about and just get get those tips and and help that you need you're more than welcome absolutely i love that i love that so what is this is one of my favorite questions to ask (laughs) people because obviously healing is is such a journey like you said you know 2012 your sister passed away your your journey kind of started there and and, you know it's been going for 12 years as we sit now and it's a never-ending journey, as we Absolutely. both know. Mm-hmm. So what's the next level of healing you're doing? What's the next thing that you're focusing on? Um, well, the next thing actually I'm focusing on is more of me as a person. So I have more like um, like a deeper healing of my identity, of who I am as a person, of who I am as a Christian. I have a deeper healing of that to do uh, and just um yeah like just things around people pleasing and just like boundaries and um things like things like that that's what I'm working on at the minute there's yeah there's quite a few things that I need to but <laughs> I suppose like for, for me it's just being it's just being fully confident in who I am as a person mm-hmm. Uh, mm. and learning to be more confident and learning to just speak out more and just be true to myself so that's mm. what I'm working on at the minute I love that so much <laughs> I love it so much that's exactly what we should all be working on right yes, now yes yes because you just you, you just never get there so it's a it's a constant journey there's always something that you can learn about yourself <laughs> mm, absolutely would you say that um like now when you start a healing journey is it easier now than it was when you first started yes yes because I've done it before and you, you kind of know like each process is different but that the first time that you make that decision to, to do the healing journey you don't know what it looks like you don't know what's going to happen but then the more you do it then the more familiar you get with the process so then the easier it becomes so when mm. you know when you get to like a certain point it, it's like it's like we say here in Northern it's like we bond so it's easier it's mm. not it's, it's not that like healing's not easy but it get easier it get easier to to go on that process because you're not you're not going into it blind for the first time you're going into it and you have no idea what's what's going to happen <laughs> oh 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. i always say to people that healing is a skill like you have it to is, learn the skill of an art. and then it yeah. gets easier yeah 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 you have to learn how to do it like because you you're not taught it you know you're not taught how to heal like you have to learn it as you go <laughs> absolutely oh my gosh okay so we're gonna wrap it up there and it's been such a privilege to have you on the podcast. Thank oh, it's you been so an much absolute pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Only a pleasure, Gillian. Thank you for listening to another inspiring episode of The Diary of Discovery. If you found value in today's conversation, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and share it with your friends, family, or anyone else you think might benefit from the stories of hope and transformation. 
Your feedback means the absolute world to us. So please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your reviews help us to reach even more listeners and continue to bring this meaningful content to the world. Until next time, remember, your healing journey is valid. You are never alone and you have the strength to get through this. Keep shining bright and we'll see you in the next episode of The Diary of Discovery.